I know you're very, very busy, Christine, so I really appreciate your, uh, your time. Um, so there is, uh, there is obviously very tough times right now, and, and it doesn't look like which you know, makes, uh, really makes us uh, happy that we have so much you know, uh, innovation going on in the room. Um, but how, how do you feel about the startup scene and the internet in France? How do you think we should, you know, is there any, are there any plans? You've just announced 26 billion euros, right? Well, let me just first of all say how pleased I am to be with you and with you all as well. Especially pleased to be with you because ever since we've known each other, you've supported me at times when people did not support me. <laughs> and I'm well. determined to support you even though people are supporting you. Um, Thank you. I think you're doing a fantastic <laughs> job. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> the other interesting feature of this event, actually, is that while obviously you're doing a lot of proximity work and getting people closer and more together, there is that really funny, interesting feeling of us being very remote from the rest of you. So there is a little bit of a, a dichotomy between what you're actually achieving and what's happening in, in a physical way. So that's so much for virtual versus real. Yeah, it, we actually like to meet each other in real a lot. And, that's uh, good. And that's I think good. that's good. We like to you know, feed each other. OK, I know what you're interested in and no, what I can. <laughs> we, yeah, let's, uh, let's just uh, have a, a chat. Yeah, yeah like you, you, you just mentioned the, the, what we call the recovery plan or the, or the boost, boosting plan that we, uh, we in France just uh, launched. Uh, we've decided to throw uh, 26 billion euros into the French economy uh, using two different ways, essentially. One is by um, emptying all the pipes. Uh, the state has pipes full of uh, debt of the state to enterprises. And uh, the, the major um, debt is one that is associated with the uh, research and development tax credit. And I think that might be of interest to some of the uh, members in, in the audience. The, the, the research and tax credit um, that we have organized in France ever since July 1st, 2008, is actually a real partnership between the state on the one hand and companies that are active in research and development and that are, are investing in research and development. If you, for instance, decide to invest in research and development, me, the state, I will credit you with 30% of any money that you invest in research and development. So you take a, a third of, it, of a bill? I pick up a third of it. And if you're actually doing that for the first year, I'll pick up 50%. Okay. Second year, 40%. Third year, 30%. And then it's 30% onwards up to 100 million euros spent on research and so development. So you're taking half of my engineers, for example, bills. Yes, wow. absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's really one uh, tax regime that is one of the most exciting and incentivizing in the world. So we are emptying that pipe by reimbursing tax credit, which is otherwise paid over a period of three years. That's one item of the recovery plan that we've uh, announced and that will be in place as of January the 1st, 2009. Right. The other big part of the plan is to actually uh, fund infrastructure uh, work and, and work that will be immediately carried out because we want the recovery to start up front as quickly and as massively as we can. How about investment? I know you have, since you, you came uh, to power, that you have made uh, a promise from, from the president that you, if, if you invest in a startup, you can deduct it from your tax, from, your, yeah. from the wealth tax yeah. in France, which is great. But like, so we are struggling here these days. It's, it's difficult and there are, um, as you know, we already talked about it, there are a few business angels. Uh, we have, you know, of course, VCs all, all around Europe, but like the beginning is very tough, right? The few mm -hmm. hundred thousands of euros which are needed for those companies. Is there any, how can, how can we have more business angels and more money f fueled into the uh, startups? Well, I know that financing is, is, a, is a real issue and uh, we're seeing it even more so at the moment. But what we, what we put in place um, as of the 1st of January 2008 was a system under which 
any taxpayer in France that is required to pay wealth tax. I know this is a very antiquated system, but we have to live with it at the moment. So uh, under French tax rules, people with wealth in excess of slightly over 700,000 euros have to pay wealth tax. What we decided was to put in place a system where instead of having to pay the tax collector, the taxpayer can actually bring equity to a startup or to an SME, small and medium-sized enterprise, up to 50,000 per year. And that 50,000 max, which is paid into the equity of a startup or an SME, is total credit against wealth tax that is due to the tax collector. So instead of paying the tax collector, you actually pay in the equity of a startup or an SME. And that has actually diverted from the tax collector nearly 1 billion euros, which has been invested into SMEs or startup companies. And it's been really efficient in 2008. We're going to carry it over in 2009, and people now will be able to just reinvest year after year up to 50,000 euros into the equity of, of SMEs, and by so doing, get credit against a wealth tax. I but think it's, it's, it's a good system, uh, and it's certainly one that has uh, helped a lot of, a lot of SMEs as, as we know it. That's great. Now, um, well, I think the room apparently <laughs> yeah, today. That's great. Now, Christine is trying really hard, uh, <laughs> as we understand, and we, we should help, I think. Um, the, um, the, the atmosphere, the, how, how can we push people, entrepreneurs, to, uh, to be more risk-taking in France and in Europe? You know, we have this, you, you've been living how, how long in the US? Seven years. Right, I'm very jealous of many things, but uh, your accent is really impressive. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, so how do you see the difference? You, you know those differences where uh, maybe it's a cliche, as we say, but like it's more, it's less risk-taking here, and, uh, and, 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 and people don't dare you know, to, uh, to, to jump in the mm. water and, uh, and launch their company. Is there something like long-term that can be done, you think? Education, maybe? Or is it you know, mm. something that you... Well, you know, the, there are a few things about cliches uh, that need to be revisited and, uh, and, and you can help and the community of, of bloggers can help actually in that respect because the typical cliche is the American is entrepreneurial and the French is conservative and typically a civil servant and I think that's very unfair uh, yes we do have civil servants uh, but there are lots of entrepreneurs in France as well and the word entrepreneur actually comes from the French language back in the 18th century. But there was a really interesting survey uh, which was conducted about two months ago, which indicated that nearly 70% of French active people actually wanted to set up their own business. It didn't say that they wanted to do that and only that, but they wanted to, to have a business, to, to, to get on with creating something. And when we, we found out about that, because we had previous um, you know, empirical data showing that, we decided um, to set up a new status for people who are prepared to take risk and who say so, and who up until now are saying, well, we're not sure because it's complicated, it's time consuming, there's a lot of bureaucracy about it, and it's costly. So we've put in place a system that did not exist under French law and French social law and French tax law, which is really the status of self-employed entrepreneur. It is some, it's called the auto-entrepreneur. And it's somebody who decides to either offer services or sell goods, but who is going to do that on a sort of let's see and try if it works basis. And who can actually register, I'm, I'm sure you can find the auto-entrepreneur uh, website that we've put in place under, un, under my uh, ministry. But it's a system under which you just register very quickly online, two slides or two screens, however, two pages, uh, and, and you have a social security and tax status, which is just the payment of a fixed fee, and that covers all required and, and, and due taxes, 
and you can just get on with the business, be covered, accrue pension as pension right as well under that system, and it's extremely efficient, and, and it's an incentive for people to just get started. And if they exceed something in the range of 80,000 euros of turnover, then they can move into another step, which is a little bit more complicated because you associate it with accounting uh, requirements, with registration, which is a little bit more technical and formal. But that is really a, an easy one to, to get started with, and, and I and hope it works. And you can create a, comp a startup business on, online on yeah, the internet, right? Absolutely. In France as well. Yeah. Last question before we, we let you, you know, go back to your uh, startup. How many people work at Bercy? Ooh, masses of them. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands, right? Not hundreds, well, not sure. Maybe not that many, but, you know, we tend to include those people that work outside of Bercy uh, in, in the territory. Um, yeah, so lots, of, lots of people, but, but they're quite smart. It's not a startup. Um, very last question <laughs> then. How can we uh, help you? Because you have 30 countries here. You have uh, you know, hundreds of bloggers. So we, I understand we can help you by promoting the fact that Europe is not, you know, like it's actually a lot of entrepreneurs. And I think the, the web helps here doing that. And if any, any way we can help you. And, and your colleagues, because we have uh, a minority from France actually yeah. here. We have uh, people from Germany, from Greece, from uh, Italy, from... Well, maybe uh, if you can help by killing those cliches too often associated with France, uh, that we are lazy, that we are uh, too easygoing, that we're not risk-taking, that we're not entrepreneurs. I think that's very much passé de passé. And uh, France has a lot to offer for those who are prepared to uh, get a business going, who want to be entrepreneurs. Uh, France supports innovation by tax schemes and credits. And there is a movement in France that is very, very determined to put France on, on an innovative, uh, forward-looking uh, stage that is certainly supported by all the changes that we've conducted under President Sarkozy's uh, drive. And, and the level of his energy is certainly matched by the level of energy that I know is often behind screens in my home country. Well, I can see your level of energy, which is very impressive. And I have to say, generally, with uh, many uh, politicians, uh, you, you, you don't get like, you ask the questions first, you know, and each of you, everything should be prepared, and Christine has not asked anything. Yeah, sure, let's have a conversation, right? So, so I'm really thankful for this, and, uh, and very, very proud to have a, a minister uh, uh, like, uh, like yourself. Uh, I have to tell you something. I'm very pleased to be here as well, because one of my sons actually pretends that he's running a business, and that there is a huge community out there of his colleagues. And I had never met that community of colleagues, but now I know who they are. So thank you very much. I'm pleased. Thank you very much. Christine. Thank you very much.